Hi, my name is Mackenzie Drebbit. Today we're going to talk about protein. Now we have some examples of protein sitting here. This is a very interesting topic because a lot of plant-based people, plant-based nutritionists who talk about nutrition, reference protein as something that you can get in almost anywhere and in any amount and you've probably heard the term that or the saying, you know, broccoli has just as much protein or more protein than steak. We're going to take a look at if this is completely accurate and how much protein we should actually be eating. So I'm going to show a couple charts. So the first chart is talking about proteins in foods and the foods are divided into 100 gram portions and then how much protein in grams that food contains. So the first one is oatmeal and we see that has 13.2 grams of protein. Almonds have 21 grams of protein. Tofu, 13 grams of protein. And then as we go down, we can see broccoli has 2.8, soybeans have 36, and it seems a little bit all over the place. But if you were to just glance at this chart, you'd think that probably almonds is one of your best sources, spirulina is one of your best or the best source that you can have of protein. So let's go down and clarify this a bit. So the next chart is foods in 100 calorie amounts. So this is where it gets a little bit deceiving is when we start breaking the foods down in unrealistic portions. So we have oatmeal is now only 3.3 grams, almonds are 3.5, tofu is 9 grams, but then if we go broccoli is 8.4 grams compared to steak which is only 2.6 grams. So here's where you get that kind of a myth that broccoli has more protein than steak. And yes, per calorie count, broccoli has more protein than steak, but we're going to see where that's actually an issue. Same with spirulina, it still seems incredibly high at 19 grams per 100 calories. So let's look at the next chart. This is foods in one cup volume amounts and then how much protein. So now we have to realize how much of a certain food we're actually going to eat. So one cup is a good way to think about that. So one cup of oatmeal is 10.7 grams of protein. Now that's easy to understand. You know how much oatmeal maybe that you would eat. Almonds, you'd have to eat an entire cup of almonds to get the 27 grams of protein. And almost nobody is going to eat one whole cup of almonds at a sitting. Tofu is 34.9 grams. Broccoli is only 2.6 grams of protein in a cup. So there's where you see the discrepancy calorie wise, but nobody knows how much calories you're eating of broccoli, but you can all understand a cup of broccoli. So that only has 2.6 grams of protein compared to steak, which has 40. So then you can see actually by how much you're eating, you're not getting that assumed high amount of protein content. And then spirulina, you'd have to eat a cup to get 64 grams of protein. And nobody's going to eat a cup of spirulina in a sitting. And then soybeans, we have our 71 grams of protein, which is the highest on the list. So this next chart is the amount of cups to equal the daily requirement of an assumed 100 grams. So this is really important because we need a certain amount of protein per day for our body to function properly. So at that amount, assuming that the only source you're getting your protein is a single source, we're going to see how many cups it requires to fulfill that source. So oatmeal, you would need 9.3 cups a day to get enough protein for around a 180 to 200 pound male per day. Almonds, you need three and a half cups of almonds a day. Tofu, you would only need 2.8 and it would be easy to eat 2.8 grams or 2.8 cups, sorry, of tofu per day. Black means you'd need three cups per day, which that could be broken down in one cup at each meal, which would be very doable. 
broccoli, you would need 38 cups of broccoli to get your daily amount of protein. So that's why it's very deceptive when you say proteins in everything. Broccoli has more protein than steak, but in what way and in how would you be able to eat? It would be almost impossible to eat 38 cups of broccoli every single day just to get your protein. Soybeans, you only need 1.4 cups. And then as comparison with meat, steak is 2.5, chicken 2.3, and spirulina 1.5 cups. And then we're going to see the average person doesn't eat anywhere near a cup and a half of spirulina. So if we look at this next chart, we have the recommended serving size in the center column and then the amount of protein in grams that that serving size has. So in oatmeal, the recommended serving size is about half a cup and that has 5.3 grams of protein. Almonds, a quarter cup is the recommended serving size and you get six grams of protein. But then if we see that and remembering our recommended intake of protein is 100 grams that we're trying to reach. Now this will, this will change depending on the person. Six grams is a drop in the bucket. Tofu, three quarters of a cup is the recommended serving. Now that doesn't mean that you can only eat the recommended serving. That is just what the average is. Tofu, three quarters of a cup is 19.9 grams. So you can see that is a very good source of protein. Black beans, a quarter cup is 12.8 grams. That's a very good source. But broccoli, again, we see a one cup recommended serving is only 2.6. So there's where we see the discrepancy. Soybeans, quarter cup is 17.9. Steak is a three ounce steak is the recommended serving size. And that's 25 grams. And spirulina, the recommended serving size is only three grams and that has 1.7 grams of protein. So you can see you're only getting maybe two grams of protein from spirulina, if that's where you're thinking you're getting your high protein source food from. So that's why we have to make sure that we're talking in context, because taking this out of context is where we can get in danger. And I've seen very many overly skinny, very sick vegans because they don't believe you need to be calculating how much protein intake you're having and you're having way too little. We even seen in Daniel and his three friends that they were eating a primarily protein based food source because they understood the importance of that because they had gone through the desert, they had lost a lot of weight, and then at the end of it, it said they were fair and fatter in flesh. That doesn't mean they were fat. That means they were thicker. They were able to put on a good amount of muscle because they were giving their body the resources it needed to build back what it had lost. So let's talk a little bit about protein and what protein does and the importance of it. So protein is made out of amino acids. And there are many different amino acids. Nine are essential, which means we have to get them from our food. And 13 are non-essential, which means our body can actually make them if we give it the proper nutrients to do so. Protein comprises nearly 20% of the body's total weight. And nearly 50% of the body's protein is in the muscles. So that's why bodybuilders and sports people are always promoting high protein because they need the muscles working, they need the muscles rebuilding because they're breaking down those muscles and they need to keep that going. The only component of the body that does not contain protein is bile and urine. So you can see that protein is everywhere in the body and is extremely important. And since there's a consistent renewal of cells in the body, you're also needing to replace those cells. So depending on the cell, that cell will last longer or shorter time in the body. Sometimes it's days, sometimes it's weeks, sometimes it can be even longer than that. But every time a cell is removed, those amino acids are broken down. Some of them can be recycled, but all the others get excreted out. 
So then you have to be replenishing those proteins on a daily basis because the body doesn't actually have a way to even store amino acids. So if you're thinking, you know, one day I had some protein, a couple days later if I had something, that's not going to be working properly because there's no storage ability of amino acids in the body and the amino acids that are there get depleted within a few hours. So that's why it's important at every meal to make sure your meals are balanced with protein, fats, carbohydrates, and then uh, you could add in there raw foods as well to ensure that you're getting your requirement that is needed daily. Approximately 33 grams of protein are lost in the body each day by the average adult male. That is why we need to be ensuring that we're eating a minimum amount of protein so that our body can function properly. So what are some other things that protein helps in our body? Some of the uses of protein in the body, it's essential for growth, repair and maintenance of all body tissue like we mentioned. It takes part in the production of enzymes and hormones which is extremely needed in our body, which helps regulate nearly every important body function. It regulates the body's water and acid-base balance, maintaining the body's fluids in their normal acid-alkaline state. It is also involved in the formation of antibodies, which are the body's first line of defense against disease. So you can see that protein is extremely important for defending disease, our hormones to be functioning properly. If you're having a hormone issue, it could be because you're not getting the proper amino acids to build those hormones. Now let's talk about a very interesting question, which is about soy. Now we've seen on the chart that soy was one of the best sources of protein. And there's huge debates over whether soy is good or the phytoestrogens and all these things. I don't have time to talk about all those things today, but you can go to one of our videos. It's called To Soy or Not To Soy. And it's a whole lecture on whether soya is good or bad and goes to the science of why. Now, referencing this book again, Back to Eden, there's a quote on page 663 that says, A knowledge of the value of the soy bean here in America is one of the greatest things that was ever launched in the food line in the history of the nation. And at this time, a great poverty, want, and disease is the most important thing that could be given to the people. So he spoke very highly of soy in the book Back to Eden. Now there's another quote on the next page that he says, the soybean is one of the greatest and most complete foods that we have. So we can see that he spoke very highly of that. Soy, soy milk, and tofu are very easy to digest, really good sources of protein, plus the phytoestrogens, which are not actually true estrogens, actually block the and in, in, inhibit estrogen overproduction into the cells, which is beneficial for both men and women. Now, just to finalize, I wanted to go over how you could kind of structure a meal and how much protein you should be eating at each meal to get in your recommended daily amount. Because as we've seen, it is very important for reproduction, hormones, for battling disease, all these things, and just being healthy overall that we get our recommended amount of protein in a day. So on a good range for a 180 pound person, we have general things that you could add up to equal uh, an acceptable amount of protein. In this chart we have, so you could mix this around. For breakfast you would have half a cup of oatmeal and then you could have some almonds, you could have some tofu, and then for the next meal you could have some black beans with your broccoli, you could have soy milk, and uh, maybe you'd have, it depends on how many meals you're eating in a day, and the different items, but you can see that our total comes to 79.2 grams, which is a good range for a 180 pound person or 180 pound male. Females don't need quite as many, 
because they're not carrying as much muscle, but they're requiring a lot of hormones to be produced. So they still need a very adequate amount of protein in order to produce those hormones. So like when we're talking about muscle, because a lot of men are worried about having muscle or being too skinny or all these things are losing strength when starting on a plant-based diet, we should really be structuring our meals around our main food groups and protein being one of them. And it is an extremely important one. And it is a little bit underestimated in some of the plant-based or vegan world that it's not that necessary, but is extremely necessary in order to keep up with the body's use of protein and in order to build muscle. So even structuring our meals similar like an athlete would, where they have their protein, their fats, and their carbs, and then they have their vegetables, is a very good way to structure our meals, but just in a plant-based version. Instead of having, you know, chicken or fish, we have tofu, or we would have beans, or we could have some other form of protein that is going to be in that meal so that we make sure that we're getting it in in a way that our body can use it. Plus, that's also going to help with insulin spike of the carbohydrates because when you add protein there, it's going to slow down the carbohydrate digestion and then your insulin spikes won't be as high, contributing to fat being stored in the body. So I hope this was helpful and that you could learn something a little bit more about how your body functions and the importance of protein in a plant-based diet. Thank you for watching and we will see you next time. Mm -hmm.